So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. I think you are now all connected. So please write on the comment section if you can actually hear me. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. It is now working. Good. Okay, so can now clearly see this question paper. But can you see the question paper? Okay. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome. So, we have the following questions that we are going to uh, uh, answer. Question one is says, using a specific example, briefly highlight the relevance of biochemistry to understanding key concepts in northern science. So please, with a specific example, who can briefly explain the relevance of biochemistry to understanding key concepts in northern science? So I'm actually watching you from your comments. Uh, who can answer this question? Please comment on, uh, on this question. What are the relevance of biochemistry in understanding northern science? But with a specific example. Please, who can say something about this before you move? I'm waiting for your response. Are you saying that slide, the, the, the slide is not showing? Can you see the question paper? Can you see the question paper, please? Okay, so let me let me share it again. So can you see it now? Can you see the question paper? Can you see the question paper now? Okay, okay, so the question says, using a specific example, briefly highlight the relevance of biochemistry to understanding key concepts in Northern science. So I think for you to answer this question is simple. First, understand what you are doing in Northern and then the biochemistry itself. Then you now link them together. So you see number one, so biochemistry is a study of chemical processes in living organisms. So actually, what is going to be answer to this? Let me just uh, say that number one, generally biochemistry is used in nursing sciences in the management of diseases. That is like treatment of diseases and the treatment or the management of disease, we can look at it under the nutritional management. There are some cases that you can take care of your patient you can take care of your patient without uh, using a drugs. So with the knowledge of biochemistry, you can actually recommend a diet. So if we speak diet for a particular patient, for the patient to take and reduce the crisis of the disease. And Ijafa, I like also your answer. Ijafa says it is used as a biomarker in diagnosis or in diagnosing a disease. Excellent. The knowledge of biochemistry is important in the diagnosis of the disease. Like for example, in the, uh, the is the uh, like creatinine kinase. Of course, it's not actually creatinine kinase. You can actually assess creatinine in the blood. So based on the creatinine, it will tell you. Because creatinine is a bio, actually, of course, a specific example. So it means that what you are going to do, if you now check in the blood, you have high concentration of the creatinine. That is a problem. There is a two issues. Number one, of course, we suppose there is a normal range for the creatinine in the blood. So if it's above that, it means that either the liver is having a problem 
why is liver is uh, having a problem if there is a damage in the liver if there is a damage in the liver it means that the content of the liver would be released into the blood so it means that the high concentration of the uh the high concentration of the creatinine in the blood is saying that the kidney is having with the liver so you can use it in the diagnosis of the disease that is number one and you can also use it in the treatment of the disease so who can give another example what is the relevance of biochemistry in most So you can also apply the knowledge of biochemistry in nursing sciences, number one, in the disease management like nutrition, where you can use a diet, like for example, you can recommend an alkaline food to your patient, and also that is number one. And then number two, apart from the disease management, you can also use the knowledge of biochemistry drug development. Like for example, if you identify a particular protein and you are actually check from the literature that protein is essential for the survival, of a particular parasite, let's say Plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium falciparum is the parasite that causes malaria. So if you now identify one important protein that is important for the survival of the Plasmodium falciparum, maybe it's an enzyme. So if it is an enzyme, it means that if you can get an inhibitor with a molecule that can block the activity of that enzyme, it means that you can develop drugs. Yeah, this is also another example of uh, Mina Solomon says it have nurses to interpret laboratory uh, results. So this is actually some of the application of nursing in, uh, sorry, of biochemistry in nursing sciences. So ladies and gentlemen, we are from glycoproteins. So the question says discourse. So what are the glycoproteins that are found uh, that are found or that are associated with the blood growth in system. So generally what I wanted you to understand when you said, uh, okay, the slide has gone again. So let me sh uh, share it again. So I hope you can cause of the sugars that are found on the surface of the red blood cell. So these sugars, there are sugars or there are i hope you can see this light now you can can you see this light now are you seeing my slides okay no So what about now? Can you see it? Can you see the slide now? Okay. So what I'm saying, we have different blood group system. So we have blood group A, we have blood group B, we have blood group AB, and we have blood group O. So what makes this different blood group differ from one another is because of the sugars that are found. So generally, we have different types of blood group. Sorry, we have different types of glycoprotein itself. So what is a glycoprotein first? When we said glycoproteins, it means that it's a conjugate or it's a compound that contains both sugar and proteins. So what are the sugars that are found on the surface of the red blood cells? So the sugar that found on the red blood cells that make different blood group types, we have galactose. So a galactose is a sugar that found on an individual with blood group B. So if you see an individual with blood group B, it means that that individual belong to blood group B because of the presence of uh, galactose on the surface of the red blood cell. And then for the individual with blood group A, it means that the person is having N acetyl galactosamine. So N acetyl galactosamine is the sugar that found on the surface of the red blood. Uh, we also have blood group AB. 
So an individual with blood group AB, it means that it's a person that have both N-acetylgalactosamine and galactose. 